Hey everyone, Selwyn here from winstrength.com. I'll be doing another training vlog for this week will be week two of the Power Building 2 template from the new wave of digital templates from Barbell Medicine. Check them out at barbellmedicine.com. Week two will be more of the same of week one, just a little bit more volume over everything really. Uh, I really like the way the these templates are structured because you get a slow ramp up in volume and intensity over the weeks. So let's start off with day one, which the main focus of is squats today. So like with most of the other movements, I'll start off the warm ups with the empty barbell. I'll put my knee sleeves on and I'll use my squat shoes, but I won't use a belt. All I'm trying to do is get the body primed for movement. I don't do rowing, foam rolling, stretching or anything along those lines. I'll simply just squat and then you'll notice here adding 135s I'm trying to stagger the weight up uh, if something doesn't feel right I'll stick with the lower weights for a couple more sets usually I'll do 135 again uh, for another working set uh, whatever so whatever the reps are for the working sets is the rep scheme I'll use for the warm-ups so if you're doing sixes like we are here I'll do six sets all the way up uh, once we start loading weight on the barbell with the empty barbell I'll do anywhere from 10 to 15 reps if I'm feeling good it'll be two sets if I'm not feeling great it'll be three sets and again with the 135 if I'm feeling great be one set if not I'll add in an extra set uh, here we have one of the final warm-up sets a 305 uh, you'll love the way I stack the plates there some people might hate that you know it is what it is so here we have 325 for six reps at an RPE 7 uh, you can kind of see potentially not going down to full depth, so I'm probably two inches high. Again, I could stand to lower that a little bit. A little bit of a struggle there towards the end there, but I think a solid, solid RPE 7. Here we have RPE 8, sets of 6 again, getting settled under the bar. Uh, I prefer a lower bar bar positioning so it's a bit more on the back you notice my hands don't wrap around the barbell at all I have my thumbs over the grip uh, I just find that a little bit more comfortable it doesn't have any wrist pain but it might contribute to a little bit of shoulder discomfort for those that don't prefer this position uh, I don't like the high bar squat position only because it doesn't feel comfortable for me for sitting on the traps whereas here it can sit on the delts and it just feels a lot more comfortable so it's eight there went great Nothing too bad, but again, slightly high on the squat depth. Here we have close grip incline bench press. I like to throw the warm up sets here again, just doing 10 to 20 uh, really quickly and not even touching the chest. So, probably not the best warm up sets there. We recommend to go a little slower than that for the warm ups. Uh, you want to kind of Treat the warm-ups as though it's heavy and then treat the heavy as though it's light. So you want to slow down a little bit there with the warm-ups. But I guess here we have 185 at 7 for pretty high speed. Again, at least I am touching the chest there it looks like. And we have another set of 185. A lot slower there. Um, for the most part I like to lower my bench press slower than usual it doesn't feel in control or steady on the way down if I like dive bomb the the reps uh, some people are different some people can really drop that weight really quickly I just recommend whatever you feel is most comfortable for you uh, the video does pause here there'll be some instances like that throughout this video for some reason the GoPro wasn't working well this week and here we have the final exercise of the day the split squat and I'm using the SS yoke bar from Elite FTS great barbell there and again the split squat differing from the lunge because we want to put more weight onto the front leg really get that burn in there I'm still kind of getting used to it I am enjoying it for like a leg burner burnout set you really feel that in the quads and a little bit in the front hamstring so it's kind of a cool exercise not my favorite but nevertheless it is part of the program and it is something I'm able to achieve So I kind of do these pretty quickly too, the fatigue kind of sets in pretty good. 
uh, that front leg's already tired from the squats, but the good thing with a single leg work is there's not any, there's really no stress on that back structure at all. So here we start off with day two. Uh, bench press is the main lift for today. So you'll notice that pattern along this template. Squat, bench, deadlift, overhead press. I want to include these these warm-up sets here. More so you can see the angle of my front foot. Well, not my front, my forearm. I only have one set of forearms. Uh, you can see that the angle is not completely vertical. There's an angle there leaning backwards, which isn't great. Uh, it indicates power loss is not efficient and it's not activating the right muscle groups. It's something I did notice uh, on last week's video and I'm trying to fix the, the next couple of weeks, but that isn't great from a, techn from a technical point of view. So here we have again, not completely vertical with these warm-ups for that one awesome weight changing rep. So here we have 245 at 7 for sets of 5. Good lift off. And see I come down really slowly for the first rep because it just kind of feels more comfortable that way. As I do more reps I can speed up a tiny tiny bit. But again no pausing here either which is another another mistake here because it is programmed for a competition style bench press which would indicate like a one count pause. That was a better pause there. So this final set at eight, bit better at the pausing, slightly better at the vertical forearm positioning from this angle at the very least. But it might there's still some little bit of angle away from the for, from completely being vertical. Here we have 250. I was able to bump up the weight a little bit. Getting the grip set, I do prefer to use wrist wraps just because it helps my wrist feel good. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the belt. I don't understand it. I've tried it a couple of times, maybe with more use it'll make sense to me. But for right now, just going without a belt feels great for the bench press, so I figure I don't use one. Again, the pausing here could be a slightly hair longer, just because, uh, not from a technical point of view, because I'm going to be entering competition, but because another movement in this program is to do touch bench presses so by combining the two varieties I'm not really getting any variation in movements I really want to delineate the two by having one with a pause and one without the pause here we have second movement for the day adjusting the shorts there uh, for the some squats with the SS yoke bar again these ones looking a little better with the SS yoke bar just for the angles and the more upright torso I prefer to bring the stance in a little bit so it's a little bit more of a narrow squat width uh, not as wide as my usual squat just feels more comfortable with the way the weights are positioned a bit more forward of me I get that more upright torso angle so it's replicating more of a front squat with the weight distribution and the body mechanical movement uh, I chose not to use some squat shoes and I'm just using the regular shoes that I use the rest of the workout in. I could probably change that up, but for the most part, I don't think it matters too much because we're not doing maximal loads. Uh, getting a little bit of stretch in the, I guess, the Achilles tendon there. But these are a bit more, I try and do these as quickly as I can, uh, just because of the high reps, I'm trying to get through those sets of 10 as quickly as possible. No other reason there, that's about it. Uh, we bump up the weights for the next set. Uh, with 150, uh, just because of the high reps, I don't think the weights use uh, that much, but I think that's because we want to drive volume here rather than intensity. So the program does opt for this is the bodybuilding portion of the lift or the hypertrophy version of the template, where the front uh, the front half of the program is more powerlifting focus and the back half is more hypertrophy focused which is that nice blend between the two uh, styles there so here we have the last set of SS squats great depth I think a lot better depth than my day one squats I think I'm not as uh, <laughs> scared of coming out of the hole here because the lights are a lot the weights are a lot lighter and I'm just getting more reps in there more speed I'm actually enjoying the SS yoke squats now that I've kind of figured out how to use them. And you'll notice here that we're about to do 170 pounds, 
but I did the dumb thing of hitting the record button and turning it on when I thought I was resting and clicking it off when I thought I was recording. So there's that. I think everyone's experienced that growing up with the odd VHS cameras. So you don't get to see that. But <laughs> here we go with some beltless overhead pressing, 85 pounds, Maya reps. Here's the first few sets. Uh, I'm not too sure why I'm not going all the way down to my chest here. I could probably stand to lower the barbell a lot more so it touches the chest and then maybe widen the grip a little bit. You do notice here I do make an active effort to shoot my head forward as quickly as possible. I'm not sure if it's te technically great but I do try to overemphasize that with the lower weight so that my body gets used to that shooting the head forward movement. Just because I can I can do that here rather than when the weight gets heavier I seem to stall that forward head shift and I get a lot of loss of power there. I'm trying to keep these as strict as possible you do see some weight shift forward a little bit onto my toes as I try to bang out the reps and here we have the rest of the the set kind of on four speed, I believe this is. So I really enjoy the Maya reps now. Uh, now that I understand, it's more of a burnout movement. Don't try and add too much weight. The first week might suck with the weight choice. I'm still not sure what the target set range is for here. So some weeks, well, definitely the first week I did about six to eight sets of the five to four. Uh, the four, succeeding, the preceding weeks. I'm actually dialing down those sets because I'm choosing heavier weights that I'm able to push out for 15 reps. Uh, so maybe it does come with time and conditioning improvement that you're able to push out a little heavier weight uh, for these Maya reps there. Something to think about. Since hypertrophy is more of a link with volume rather than overall intensity, so provided you are working, I think, over the 60% range Ideally, I think 65 to 75 is the minimum threshold there. Uh, provided you're doing that for high volume is enough to stimulate hypertrophy. And that, that's why a lot of uh, bodybuilders tend to stay away from heavy weights compared with powerlifters, yet they look or they appear to have bigger muscles than the powerlifters there. Uh, so we go into day three, which is deadlift day. Uh, just like before, I like to warm up with Romanian deadlifts uh, before the deadlift. I think it's a great variation, it just kind of activates the hamstrings, the lower back, it gets a movement similarly primed. Um, I'll slowly lower the bottom of the rep range, so I'll probably start off at uh, just at knee height, and then as the reps and sets go on, I'll, I'll lower that down to where I think a regular barber will start off the floor on the deadlift. Um, so here you're probably seeing the final set before I move over to regular deadlifts. Uh, the reason I don't do regular deadlifts is I don't want to pick the bar up off the ground. That's really it. So here we have the progression 135, 185, 245, 315, um, and then 345. I'm trying to decrease the amount of different sets I use on the way up. So instead of doing 45, 25, um, doing 45 plus a 10 or 25 plus a 10 or a 15 so just to get those that shortened down that warm-up time we have the 365 for seven looking at my feet and the bar path so you can see the bar path doesn't really swing forward or push back at that initial instance of the lift which is nice not too much weight shift in the feet either. So again, we're dealing with some submaximal weights here, so the form should be 95%, if not better. Uh, here we have 375 for eight. Do this for set a couple, one more set, I believe. But we want to pay attention. You really want to pay attention to the feet because that'll dictate uh, where your balance is. And then you want to look at the bar path if that pushes forward or pulls back a little bit when you initiate the lift. So see that there was a little bit of forward movement there. And again, <clears throat> what you really want to look at is if you can put, yeah, a lot of forward movement here for the bar. 
of the barbell on the way up. Yep, it pushes for you can see it pushes forward as I breathe down to initiate the lift. And then you'll see my hips rise up before the barbell lifts up off of the ground. So again, I could stand to keep the shins a little bit more vertical and keep that hip a little bit higher before I pick that weight up. Uh, what would be helpful is if you could draw a white line or something along those lines if you if you don't have a logo on the plates like mine do it they're all blocked off um, what all that what that'll do is on the replay you'll be able to see exactly if the that mark moves back or forth it'll be a little bit easier to tell rather than looking at round black plates I have a little bit of a shadow there that I'm looking at and some chalk markings but you can see yeah see that it rolls forward and then I pick up not great because I'm wasting movement there I'm pushing the barbell further away from my center line um, and then once you see that you can see where else you're moving so that one was good my hips didn't shoot up at that point for that rep my hips aren't shooting up as much as they were before so not great some technique work I have to do for the deadlifts there uh, again terrible <laughs> bench pressing here that angle of the forearms is just horrendous it's not straight at all especially when you compare it to the uprights and I am wrapping that out rather quickly so this is what I was talking about these are the touch bench presses so you want these to be different to the competition bench press mainly for a variation point of view that way I have touch bench press and a one count pause bench press so you get a little bit of a different training stimulus which will help drive up whichever bench press you actually want to use not necessarily for a competition purpose so it looks like as the weight gets heavier my arms start to go in a little bit more of a vertical bar path I'm also probably focusing more on getting those forearms a bit more vertical touching a little bit lower on the chest is really the way to do that because I don't want to flare the elbows out as much I really do like the elbows tucked position I've been watching a couple more technique videos on YouTube uh, how to get that one of them is to think of bending the barbell not necessarily towards you but towards your feet is another way to activate the rotator cuffs and get your elbows in, a, in the right position so if you look in the mirror my forearms are pretty vertical from one axis uh, from this angle it looks like they're still vertical so I think when the weight gets heavier my my body just shifts into a more efficient movement just because the weight's a lot heavier so that's good so now we have the final movement for the day which are penlay rows the camera didn't catch my AMRAP set, so here it is, 175 for sets of 12. You can see a lot of hip movement here and the shoulders rising. Uh, but hey, there you go. Uh, day 4, which is the overhead press focus. So you have some warm-ups here. Really trying to drive the head forward again. That's just probably the master cue that I've been really trying to focus on in the last couple weeks whenever I do an overhead press just because I've noticed when the head doesn't shoot through you do get a lot of power leakage in them because you're basically pushing the barbell in front of you rather than straight above you the reason you want to shift the head forward is so you engage a little bit more muscle mass and maintain the barbell over that midfoot I kind of overshot the RPE targets here thought I could go heavier you can see this definitely in this set watch my hips they shoot forward a lot and my butt starts to arch back and then boom see that sideways hip shift I'm kinda of pushing past the limits of good form you will see it again here it shifts right and that's really me bending forward and creating a, a giant U leaning back as much as I can um, not great form not great technique uh, so I did have to drop the weight a little bit just to go back to an RPE of 8 uh, you can see they're still shaky in the hips there's a lot of unnecessary movement ideally the only thing that should be moving is your upper torso all of my like lower body should stay still if it was strong enough to maintain that weight so moving on to remaining in deadlifts again I like to start these off the floor uh, for this template I am trying to do the entire wave of this with no belt no lifting straps just to train do a little bit more grip training um, and they recommend to not use belts for the for the any of the accessory movements so I'm trying to stick by that get a little bit more 
variation it's not necessarily to activate more abs as they say uh, it's more just to get a little bit more variation and train your body to brace a little bit better because what the belt does it allows you to brace harder because you're pushing against something that's tactile when you don't have the belt you're not able to push as hard as you could that's why it seems to be a little bit easier because you're solidifying that midline there so we have Maya reps with the feet up bench press variety uh, this is where I'm um, think I'm picking up how to do the Maya reps more effectively with a little bit heavier weight that I can barely hit 15 for uh, and that allows me to not have eight sets of five for the Maya rep portion of this so we're activating here all more of the muscle fibers and each subsequent set you're only giving your body 20 seconds rest so you're fatiguing a lot of muscles and then driving more muscle activation just because more and more muscles are getting um, introduced into the mix because of that 20 second rest period it's also a great uh, conditioning tool which I think is also helping in the in the subsequent weeks by improving conditioning you're able to improve a lot of other capacities uh, for powerlifting bodybuilding type workouts just because you're able to do more for a longer period of time focusing on one rep maxes will not necessarily be that advantageous if you're trying to do things other than lift for one rep uh, and what I mean by that is if you're unconditioned you can only work out for so long just so you can only work out for 60 minutes while pushing it to your maximum or like 80 percent when you improve your conditioning you're able to actually lift more and do more for the same amount of time if not longer so maybe I could work out for 90 minutes maybe I can decrease that rest period a little bit more and drive up the stress and drive up a little bit more adaptation to uh, conditioning and GPP which I think is great to focus on not necessarily works out in real world but if you're conscious of your rest periods and not just waiting to be fully recovered if you maybe only rest 80% 90% of the time you think you need which comes over time um, you'll be able to drive up a little bit more conditioning in in an indirect way rather than sitting there on a treadmill for 20 minutes so that wraps up week two again I thank you for watching and tuning in tr uh, keeping track of my journey along this new template that I'm undergoing uh, if you would like subscribe uh, comment down below if there's something you want me to address in these videos or something you'd like to change I really want to s create some content that's usable for people out there. Uh, again, this has been Selwyn from winstrength.com. I'll leave the relevant links for my WordPress blog, which is a weekly thing that I update, a bit more written, address a little bit more different things for the week. Uh, you'll be able to see the weights and the reps that I use, a couple more Instagram links there. I'll also leave links for the Bible Medicine crew and the digital template links. Highly recommend checking those out. If you don't have a template, uh, I'll, I want to make another video regarding why you should use somebody else's programming. I think it's better. I think my improvements have gone up significantly. Not just like the weights lifted, but my abilities have improved significantly by using other people's templates and helping, getting someone else to help you with your journey there. So thanks again. Like, comment, subscribe, share it out. Uh, this has been Selwyn from winstrength.com.